Okay, move out. I'm Sergeant Major Woods, your host for this issue of The Big Picture. While the U.S. Army has many missions in many lands, the attention of our nation is focused inevitably on Army activities in one particular part of the world, Vietnam. During the past decade, the United States Army has been assigned increasing responsibilities here in pursuit of our government's commitment to the government of free South Vietnam. On your Army reports today, we will show you some of the combat operations involving U.S. troops in Vietnam and present some close-ups of Army support activities in Saigon that are helping in the war effort. Our first story, a combat mission by the 1st Air Cavalry Division. Code name, Operation Washington Irving. In the coastal highlands of South Vietnam, Men of the U.S. Army 1st Air Cavalry Division move through the jungle in search of enemy forces. The monsoon season has come, and Operation Washington Irving is in full swing. Already, many Viet Cong prisoners have been taken. Now the search is on for two battalions of North Vietnamese regulars who are reported to be massing for an attack on one of our airstrips. Except for isolated sniper fire, no contact has been made yet. Only one village has been discovered along the way. Intelligence reports have identified this entire area as a possible Viet Cong stronghold, and the troops are on the alert for trouble. In a Vietnamese village, trouble has many hiding places, but so far, the only male discovered is a boy. He is questioned intensively by an interpreter who translates the boy's answers for the company commander. The women are also interrogated. VC often flee before the searching U.S. troops and return as soon as they think it is safe. Throughout the operation, contact is maintained with the command post as hostile forces may have been spotted in the vicinity. At least for the present, the jungle around the troopers is quiet. They grasp the opportunity for a much needed coffee break. The sound and sight of an approaching helicopter raises their spirits. With any luck, it may be bringing food, cigarettes, maybe even some dry clothing. The helicopter has brought food, mail, cigarettes, and other assorted items. and enough dry socks to go around. Out here, even that GI coffee tastes good. The Vietnamese jungle isn't famous for its creature comforts, but the men do the best they can. A clear afternoon before the monsoon rains start up again provides an opportunity for drying things out. Time for hot chow also brought in for the men by helicopter. In the quickly shifting jungle war, Army field kitchen facilities follow the troops wherever possible. The order comes to move out. Ahead, the troopers will meet up with the enemy. When the battle is over, the troopers will count 270 enemy dead, 60 captured, and 200 prisoners suspected of collaborating with the Viet Cong. An important army activity is to aid Vietnamese troops in their fight against the Viet Cong. In the Southern Delta country, members of the 21st Infantry Division, Army of the Republic of Vietnam, move in force against VC positions. 
The U.S. Army Aviation Battalion provides air support for Operation Dan Chi. The Delta country of South Vietnam is the scene of an intensive campaign by Vietnamese Ranger troops against Viet Cong forces in the area. Helicopters of the U.S. Army 13th Aviation Battalion provide direct air support, transporting the men to their destination in Operation Don Chi. En route, the battle zone is carefully observed, and enemy positions below are fired upon by our gunners. Rangers are landed in a rice field near the forest, where the VC have strong concentrations of men and arms. They close in on their objective in two converging forces. In a day-long battle, the Rangers exact a heavy toll. Armed U.S. helicopters, which block escape routes, add to enemy casualties. After the battle, the South Vietnamese troops are flown back to their camp and results of the conflict are evaluated. The attack has broken up several established enemy training and staging areas. The Rangers have taken many prisoners, including 55 members of an elite Viet Cong guerrilla force. In addition to prisoners taken in battle, many Viet Cong defect to government troops. As a result of continuous pressure by South Vietnamese soldiers and U.S. forces, the number of defecting V.C. is steadily increasing. Women, too, are among the defectors. U.S. advisors look on as the V.C. line up for questioning. A careful watch is kept over the prisoners as these troops of the Republic of Vietnam bring their campaign to a successful conclusion. One week later, at headquarters of the 13th Aviation Battalion, commander of U.S. forces in South Vietnam, General William C. Westmoreland, comes to present an award to the unit for its remarkable role in supporting the Vietnamese Rangers in the Delta Campaign. General Westmoreland and the battalion commander troop the line. Already the most decorated American aviation battalion in Vietnam, the 13th receives a new streamer for the battalion flag. Citation is awarded for extraordinary heroism and professional skill in support of Operation Don Chi. The unit commander received the document on behalf of the battalion. Following the presentation, the men of the 13th hear a personal commendation from General Westmoreland. Reward for victory in the Delta, a military success achieved through the cooperation of South Vietnamese forces and U.S. Army aviation support. Other U.S. Army aviation units in South Vietnam fly many different types of missions that contribute to our success in combat. At this Army airstrip about 55 miles northwest of Saigon, a shipment of radio communications equipment is loaded aboard a helicopter for an unusual delivery. The shipment is bound for Nu Ba Den, the Black Virgin Mountain, site of a Special Forces radio relay station 3,200 feet above sea level. The summit where the American outpost is located is the highest point in the area, but visibility is often poor. Despite low-hanging clouds, helicopters are able to land to deliver the badly needed equipment. Except for our camp, the mountain is controlled by the Viet Cong, and all supplies and personnel must be brought in by airlift. Living here are approximately 100 Cambodians, including soldiers and their dependents. 
The soldiers provide a security force for the site under the direction of the U.S. Special Forces team. With the completion of the supply operation, the radio relay station is equipped to continue its important military communications assignment. Another key Army aviation activity in Vietnam is retrieving Army aircraft damaged or wrecked in military operations. A recovery team has been dispatched to the scene of this crash of a large cargo-carrying helicopter, a Chinook. All wreckage is to be returned to a maintenance area. Members of the recovery crew have removed the heavier parts to lighten the downed craft for airlift. The parts are loaded aboard another Chinook. Components too large for loading are lifted from the wreckage and carried below the recovery aircraft by a heavy cargo sling suspended from a hydraulically operated hoist. Now the flying crane is brought in for the difficult job of airlifting the large fuselage of the wrecked helicopter. The heavy-duty flying crane, which can lift loads up to 10 tons, can retrieve any rotary or fixed-wing Army aircraft of any shape and size and fly it swiftly to repair facilities. Salvaging of costly equipment in operations like this one is a procedure that aids the Army's economy program. After the load has been safely secured in its sling, a drag parachute is released to stabilize the ponderous cargo in flight. The journey back over the mountains gets underway. The airlift nears its destination, an Army Aircraft Field Maintenance Center equipped to handle the repair assignment. Now the wrecked helicopter is eased down. Soon, maintenance experts will take over and begin the work of restoring it so that it may be returned to duty with as little delay as possible. The many capabilities of the helicopter and other aircraft in military operations have helped to emphasize the role of Army aviation as an effective means of combat support. Wherever soldiers do battle, provision must be made for tending the wounded. In Vietnam, the Army nurse serves the combat soldier on many fronts. From the swamps and rice paddies of the Delta to the jungle regions of the Central Highlands. While Army nurses seldom make the headlines, they are all VIPs very important persons to the men who are in need of their help. The general buildup of American forces in Vietnam has called for a considerable increase in hospital personnel. By helicopter and ambulance, the wounded are delivered to the hospitals where army nurses and doctors are ready and waiting to administer medical aid. Both male and female nurses assist in recovery procedures. If necessary, patients receive immediate treatment in the emergency receiving room. When surgery is required, nurses serving as part of a medical team prepare the patient and assist in operating procedures. In the recovery room or in the ward, Nursing duties range from routine bed care of the patient to medical treatment requiring specialized skills. During off-duty hours, many of the nurses are engaged in providing medical care in civic action programs. Another off-duty project is the buildup of this orphanage near Saigon. Here, nurses and doctors alike devote spare time to organizing various activities. Recently, they have helped repair and repaint the children's living quarters and provided medication and clothing. The staff of the orphanage stages an impromptu entertainment for the nurses and doctors. The children show their appreciation with a dance pantomime entitled, The Funeral of a Mouse. The activities of Army nurses in Vietnam are extensive and varied. This highly trained chief nurse at the Third Field Hospital is also a bit of an architect. Here she looks over blueprints for a new intensive care ward, which she helped design and which is now under construction.
After long and arduous on-duty hours comes an opportunity to see a little of the town. Window shopping is the same anywhere in the world. And despite the war, Saigon displays its share of modes and fashions. The sights and sounds of the colorful city provide a novel and interesting experience. The architecture of many of the buildings reflects Vietnam's long association with Western culture. Next stop, the rooftop terrace of the U.S. Army Officers Club, which offers an exciting view of the city. Pictures are taken for the folks back home as the girls who've had a busy day prepare to wind up their afternoon's excursion. Some of the girls may spend their afternoon at the Post Exchange Beauty Parlor, where Milady the nurse goes for the works. At the hospital lounge, a good way to relax is to get together over a game of cards. After the game, of course, there'll be a chance to catch up on the latest gossip. And what's an evening without at least one long session on the telephone? There are always letters to be written to friends and relatives back in the States. For the girl who likes to curl up with a good book, there are plenty available from the nearest special services center. Even the U.S. Army goes along with romance, as this Army nurse is given time out for wedding bells. Before a group of well-wishing friends, the marriage takes place in the Third Field Hospital Chapel. hospital chaplain performs the ceremony. Both bride and groom are assigned to the hospital staff, which makes it an all-army affair with all the trimmings. Next day, it's business as usual as nurses accompany patients to a medical evacuation airlift. The men are put into ambulances for the trip to Tunsonhut Air Base outside Saigon for the journey back to the United States. The nurse rides with her patients in case she should be needed on the way. At the airfield, she helps supervise the loading of the patients onto the aircraft. Patients and medical records are turned over to an Air Force flight nurse who will accompany the wounded men on their trip home. In a demanding and often dangerous assignment, these women serve in the finest traditions of our armed forces. Vietnamese women play an important role in the battle for a free South Vietnam. The Vietnamese Women's Army Corps conducts a continuous training program under the guidance and supervision of U.S. Army WAC officers. WAC Colonel Judith Bennett tells the story in an interview in Saigon. This is Army Specialist Mike Baker reporting for the MACV Office of Information from the Women's Armed Forces Corps near Saigon, Vietnam. With me today is Lieutenant Colonel Judith Bennett, Senior Advisor, Women's Army Corps. Colonel Bennett, the Women's Armed Forces Corps of the Republic of Vietnam is organized in a similar manner, yet different than the Women's Army Corps of the United States. In actu actuality, how different are the two corps? Well, in the first place, I should point out that there are many similarities. Outstanding among these are that they are all volunteers 
and they all perform administrative type duties as opposed to combat type duties. The original mission was to release men to be assigned to combat or combat support duties. We have both basic training and officer training in country now. Both activities have been established since the new corps was formed the 1st of January 1965. <laughs> In the past, we've had some difficulty in finding enough officers um, in the YFC who had the English proficiency which was necessary for the school in the States. We do not anticipate that problem in the future since we do have a number of hours in English in our officer candidate class. My name is Irene Mason. My name is Irene Mason. Oh, yes, I know you. 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 Who is that over there? Who is that over there? The welfare workers are a rather unique area that the WAFSIs work in. These women work with the dependents of the soldiers. The Vietnamese allow their dependents to go down to regimental level. And while the soldiers are out on operation, these WAFSIs see that the dependents are taken care of. My first major project in Vietnam was to establish an in-country officer candidate school. Chắc chắn là không. Thành ra cái yếu tố mà học viên đó cũng rất là quan trọng. When they can successfully complete the course, they are commissioned as aspirants, which, although we don't have a comparable rank, we might think of it as a third lieutenant. Their next promotion would be to second lieutenant. Well, thank you very much, Colonel Bennett. During the night of 7 October 1966, an artillery battery of the 173rd Airborne Brigade moved from its base camp to a defensive position near Da Nang, replacing a Marine unit which had been ordered to another area. This on-the-spot film record of Battery B is a vivid documentary of the sights and sounds of an artillery fire mission. This is a U.S. artillery compound near the coastal city of Da Nang. The Marine unit leaves the area en route to the north, where it will support other Marine units fighting near the demilitarized zone. The Army artillery battery moves in, positioning its howitzers. The men and their guns were flown in from their base the preceding day and made the last leg of the journey by convoy. The job of readying the big guns for their mission begins immediately. Artillery components are quickly assembled by battery experts. The area is closed off with sandbags for protection of personnel and ammunition. Guns are adjusted to permit a final check before firing. In the tropical climate of Vietnam, maintenance of weapons and military equipment is a difficult and exacting duty. Each man in the battery has been thoroughly trained in maintenance procedures and must be sure that the gun is ready for action. Behind sandbag emplacements, the fire direction control center for the battery has been set up. Now, a call is received from a forward artillery observer giving information for the fire mission. 
grid coordinates are recorded, along with other information given by the observer. Using all available data, shell deflection and quadrants are computed on the fire control plotting board. Accuracy of the fire mission is essential to clear the zones surrounding the base, thus denying the enemy areas where he can concentrate forces for an attack. Once the firing data has been computed, the gun section is notified. The gun crews move to their weapons. Howitzer shells are prepared for firing. Sighting adjustments are made. The fire order is given. Reports are received that all enemy objectives have been hit. The fire mission is successful. It's all in a day's work for the men of Battery B, whose motto is, shells on target. The United States Army in Vietnam is many people doing many things. Whether it be direct combat against the aggressor, tactical support for Vietnamese military operations, nursing care for the wounded, guidance for the participation of women in the war effort, or morale building activities, the goal is constant. The purpose determined that the people of South Vietnam shall remain free to decide their own destiny. This is Sergeant Major Woods bringing to a close this issue of your Army Reports.